soon after the 1876 invention of the telephone, it became clear that the real challenge would be connecting all the calls. By 1932, when switchboards, old and new, was produced, there were nearly 18 million phones in the United States and switchboard technology was rapidly evolving. Here at the at t Archives and History Center, you will find many generations of switchboards. This was one of the earliest. Modeled after the first switchboard installed in New Haven, Connecticut, this board was installed three days later in the second commercial telephone exchange in Meriden, Connecticut on January 31, 1878. When a call was received, one of these metal flags would drop. Look for a similar model in action in the film. This switchboard is from 1923. It's a section of the number nine toll switch from the last manual switchboard in at t s Bell system. It was installed on Catalina Island off the coast of California, where it remained in service until 1978. Both of these were used in phone company exchanges, but this one was used in a PBX or private branch exchange. These switchboards were designed for private operators directing calls in and out of hotels or business offices. This model was used in New York City at 550 Madison Avenue from 1984 to 1986. Today, many businesses use virtual switchboards in which calls are directed automatically using an interactive voice response system. But after watching the film, you may find yourself wishing for the days when you picked up the receiver and heard... Number, please. There it is, millions of times a day in America. Someone has a message for someone else. A signal is flashed, it's answered. A highway for quick private travel is needed. The routes are selected, joined together, and then... The intricate and sensitive apparatus for all this has had a most romantic history of development. Switching the voice from one line to another was first tried over the wires of a burglar alarm system in Boston in May 1877, a little more than a year after the telephone had transmitted the first complete sentence. The manager of this system put telephone instruments in the offices of five of his customers for a few days and connected one with another through switches in his own office. It was over a year after Alexander Graham Bell had begun to demonstrate his invention that there was a commercial telephone switchboard. It was put in service in New Haven, Connecticut on January 28, 1878. Here is a model of it. It had eight lines with a total of 21 subscribers, so the operator wasn't very busy. What do you want? Hitching City Market? What's your name? Oh, all right, Dr. Burwell, just a minute. Hello. Hello. City Market? Someone wants to talk to you. Wait a minute. All right, Dr. Burwell. Here's Hitchings Market. Go ahead. And as yet, there was not any voice with a smile, as this New York switchboard 1879 model makes clear. Very clear. Here's the way it was operated. <laughs> History tells us that subscribers had difficulty in getting connections. The history is probably right about it. Now, for the sake of contrast, let's glance at an operating room of today. This is an unusual picture because few operating rooms are long enough for a switchboard of this size to be built without curves or angles. It can serve as many as 10,500 lines. 
Some peculiar switching devices made their appearance during the first few years of switchboard development. This one, for example, could accommodate only a small number of lines, but it was the first to introduce the key shelf, which had such an important development, and the cord circuit. Sections could be installed side by side and take care of 200 or 300 lines. But as telephone central offices increased in size, this method became difficult and awkward and was generally unsatisfactory until the invention in 1882 of the multiple switchboard. The thought underlying the multiple switchboard was that an operator must be able to connect any one of the particular group of lines she answered with any other line on the entire switchboard. That meant that terminals for every line had to appear somewhere within the reach of every operator. These terminals, which were small, circular openings on the switchboard, were called jacks. For example, terminal jacks for line 1, 2, 3, 4 appeared a number of times on the switchboard, but all of them were connected together. And any operator at the entire switchboard could establish a connection to line 1, 2, 3, 4. A splendid idea. But how was an operator to know whether or not a line she wished to connect to was busy? Perhaps an operator at another part of the switchboard had already established a connection to the line. A quick and accurate means was devised whereby the operator, before plugging in, touched the tip of her plug to the rim of the jack. If a sharp click was produced in a receiver, it meant that the line was busy. If no click was heard, it meant that the line was not in use and she could establish the connection. Another very important milestone in switchboard progress was the introduction of the common battery system. This enabled one large storage battery in the central office to supply the current for talking, replacing the individual batteries on the subscriber's premises. Of course, local conditions determine when a common battery can be used economically. For a scattered population where switchboards are smaller in size, talking current is supplied by dry batteries installed with each telephone. Hand generators are used to signal the operator, and drop signals instead of electric lights serve to attract her attention. This type of switchboard is known as a magneto board. From successive improvements, the switchboard of today was evolved. Here it is. The A board, or answering board, in a large central office. Notice the orderly but complex system of wiring under the key shelf. Your telephone line terminates in a jack and lamp. When you remove the receiver, the lamp lights instantly, and your call is answered by one of the operators before whom the light appears. By this arrangement, there is always an operator ready to take your call. Usually, the operator at the A board passes the call to another type of board for completion. It's known to telephone people as the B board, or completing board. You'll notice that the face of this board is full of the openings called jacks, but there are no accompanying lamp signals. For every two or three operators at a B board, there's one of these jacks associated with your telephone. This type of multiple arrangement was developed directly from that first used in 1882. If your line is not busy, the operator inserts the plug in the jack, and the ringing starts automatically. You'll usually find that special private switchboards are used in business offices. There are many types and sizes. Some serve a few telephones in a small office. Others are designed to interconnect hundreds of telephones in a large organization. One of the largest of these private switchboards is in a New York hotel. 24 operators can sit at this switchboard, which utilizes 139 trunk lines to telephone central offices and serves over 3,000 telephones within the hotel. If you ever visit a toll, a long-distance operating room, here's another type of switchboard that you'll see. Now, these are also multiple switchboards, so that direct lines to many out-of-town points are within immediate reach of every operator. In a dial office, the switching equipment automatically gives you the number dialed, or else reports that it's busy. There is, however, a switchboard with operators in every dial office. Here is one. If you call a number that's been changed or disconnected, for example, your call is automatically routed to one of these operators. Or, if you dial operator, one of them will answer you. 
If you dial operator in an emergency and call for the fire department or the police department or for an ambulance, one of these operators will not only complete your call, but will supervise it personally until your message has been transmitted. An exceedingly interesting apparatus is known as the call distributing B board, which is used when calls for dial telephones are received from non-dial telephones. In completing the call, the operator depresses numbered keys that correspond to the number wanted. An entirely different method had to be developed for completing calls when the situation is reversed, that is, when a dial subscriber wants to reach a non-dial subscriber. The number that was dialed appears in illuminated figures before the operator in the manual office, who then completes the call. Here is one of the latest and most unusual developments, a teletypewriter switchboard, where connections are made so that written messages can pass back and forth between teletypewriters, just as conversations flow between telephones. At this board, however, there's no spoken number, please. Teletypewriter users communicate with the operator in writing, the desired number appearing before her on a tape. And she communicates with other teletypewriter switchboards in the same way. The written word, not the spoken word, is what passes over the wires. Fifty years have made a vast difference in the mechanisms for switching one telephone line to another. And the operating rooms have reflected many other changes, too. For millions of young women have sat before the nation's switchboards, as 200,000 sit before them today. The telephone family album has preserved for us the changing mode in operators' equipment and in operators' adornment as well. It is a changing America that these portraits reflect. But though the fashions in both equipment and adornment have changed with the years, there's one fashion that has not changed the fashion of loyalty that has marked these public servants ever since switchboards became their charge. The spirit that has become a tradition that has been supremely demonstrated so very many times that women have in the fullest measure. Surely these weavers of speech are part of the pageant of America's history. You will recognize the newest portrait in the album for it is a speaking likeness. Number, please. Thank you. A composite likeness of the hundreds of thousands, alert, devoted, true, who serve us all at the switchboards of the nation. 